In 2008, Warren Buffett had challenged the hedge fund industry, saying that after including all fees, costs and expenses, the S&P 500 index would outperform a hand-picked portfolio of the hedge funds over a 10-year period. This bet put two basic investing philosophies against each other, active investing versus passive. And do you know which one won? Index funds. Interesting. Passive investing won against the Ivy League educated fund managers who have spent decades studying the market. Can you also, with no prior experience, use this tool to grow your wealth? In this video, we'll see what are index funds, which one is the best for you and what do you need to know before you start investing in an index fund right after you hit the like button. An index at the beginning of the book lists out the content covered in the book. A stock market index is somewhat similar. It is essentially a group of companies defining a market segment. For example, Nifty 50 is the index for National Stock Exchange, the NSE, which represents the weighted average market cap of the 50 of the largest companies traded on the NSE. Similarly, Sensex is the index of the 30 of the largest companies that are traded on Bombay Stock Exchange, the BSC. Okay, so what is an index fund? An index fund is a type of mutual fund that copies the portfolio of a market index. For example, assume these are the stocks of individual companies. This one is Reliance. This is HDFC Bank. Now, you can do your own research and choose which individual stocks you want to buy in. This is called stock picking. Now the problem is if one of these stock crashes, you are in big trouble. The great thing about index funds is that you can invest in all these companies without going through the hassle to buy the stocks individually. And one stock falling will have the minimum impact because you have a bunch of other stocks in your index fund that will protect your portfolio. By investing in an index fund, you are creating a diversified portfolio of quality assets that earns as much return as the market itself. Individual stocks may rise and fall, but the indices tend to rise over time. Therefore, you are minimizing your risk when you invest in an index fund. Did you notice I said you are going to earn as much as the market? Index funds only copy the index. They do not try to beat its return. It offers nothing more than a guarantee of average results. Nothing extraordinary, just average. However, sometimes aiming for the average may be the best strategy for an investor. According to a 2020 report, over a 15 year period, nearly 90% of the actively managed funds failed to beat the market. Most actively managed funds underperform compared to the market as a whole. The only incentive to invest anywhere is to earn higher returns. But what if your actively managed mutual funds that charge so much fees fail to deliver those returns? Let's see how many large cap mutual funds have underperformed compared to the Nifty 50 index. In 2013, 13 of the 27 funds analyzed were underperforming Nifty 50. That is 48%. Last year as well, 52% funds have underperformed Nifty 50. If you take on an average last 3 years number, the number is still very high. 52%, 48%, 52%. So you see, 52% means a majority of the actively managed funds are underperforming the index funds. So, even if you have time to research those better performing active funds, doesn't it make sense to invest in index funds when we know that 90% of those actively managed funds are not going to beat the index funds over a long period of time. Suppose an index fund tracks a benchmark like Nifty 50. This fund will have the exact same 50 stocks that are part of the index. The fund house will passively monitor the performance of the fund and buy and sell stocks if there is any change in the underlying index. When indices are rebalanced, new stocks may come in and existing stocks may go out to reflect the changes in the market capitalization of the companies. Now stocks have weights in the index. For example, Reliance constitutes 12.51% of Nifty 50 as of today. In our example, our index fund has the same 50 stocks as the index with the same weight. So our return must exactly match the index return, right? Well, that's not the case. Here is the twist. Even though index funds mirror the index, there is a small difference in their return. This is called tracking error. Now, this tracking error could be due to various factors like liquidity provisions, corporate actions, 
changes in underlying stocks, etc. The lower the tracking error, the better. As an investor, you don't need to worry about the reason for the tracking error. You just want it to be as low as possible. It is the duty of the fund manager to bring this as low as possible. What do you need to consider when you are choosing a fund? The first one, as we just saw, is tracking error. It needs to be as low as possible. And the second major factor is expense ratio. Expense ratio is the annual expense of the scheme for operating the fund. This includes fees for management, administration and other expenses. This is always mentioned upfront. Now, typically, the expense ratio of index funds is lower than the expense ratio of actively managed funds because the engagement of the fund manager is limited. And the lower the expense ratio, the better for the investor. Usually, the expense ratio of a large cap fund is around 1.5% in India. For index funds, it's around 0.2%. Do you want to see what a measly 1.3% can do over a long period of time? Suppose you invest 1 lakh rupees with 50% return every year. Now with 1.5% expense ratio, you will make 3 lakh 54,000 in 10 years and 12 lakh 58,000 in 20 years. With 0.2% expense ratio, you will make 3 lakh 97,000 in 10 years and 15 lakh 80,000 in 20 years. That is a difference of 3 lakh rupees on a one-time investment of 1 lakh rupees. If you increase the investment to 10 lakh rupees, your difference will be 30 lakh rupees in 20 years. You can buy a 2 or 3 BHK in a tier 2, tier 3 city in India. Needless to say, the lower the expense ratio, the better for the investor. What are some popular indices in India and outside India? Let's see. So the indices could be broad market-based like Nifty 50, Nifty Next 50, or sector-based like Nifty Auto, Nifty Bank, or theme-based like Nifty Infra and others. Nifty 50 is one of the most popular one in India. It represents the weighted average market cap of 50 of the largest Indian companies listed on the NSC. We have Nifty Next 50, which represents the next rung of 50 companies listed on NSC. We also have Nifty 100, which represents the top 100 companies listed on NSE by the market cap. Now you may think that investing in Nifty 100 is same as investing in Nifty 50 and Nifty Next 50. Same group of 100 companies, right? Well, that's not the case. The Nifty 50 companies account for 80% of the Nifty 100's total weight. And the remaining 50 companies of Nifty Next 50 only account for the balance 20%. Simply put, if you invest 100 rupees in Nifty 100, then 80 rupees will go towards Nifty 50 companies and the balance 20% will go towards Nifty Next 50 companies. One of the good funds to track Nifty 50 index is Navi Nifty 50 index. It has the lowest expense ratio of 0.06%. Let's talk about diversification. Suppose you want to have some diversification in your investments. So you invest in the HDFC Nifty 50 fund and the Axis Nifty 50 fund. Do you think this is the right strategy? Well, you are smart. You know this is not the right strategy. HDFC and Axis are only the fund houses which have created their funds. But the underlying investment is in the same group of 50 companies. You are not diversifying, you are actually concentrating your investments. No, God! No, God, please, no! No! Some of you have also started investing in US stocks through IND Money or Vested or other platforms. So what are the popular indices in US? NASDAQ 100 and S&P 500 are the two most popular indices in US. NASDAQ 100 is a very tech-heavy index. 102 stocks issued by 101 companies? If you know how this is possible, let me know in the comment section. To invest in NASDAQ 100, you can use Motilal Oswal NASDAQ 100 ETF. This is an Indian fund which invests in the US market. Or you can directly invest in Invesco QQQ through Vested IND Money and other platforms. S&P 500 is a stock market index tracking the performance of the 500 of the largest companies listed on the exchanges in US. Vanguard 500 Index Fund Admiral Shares or VFIAX is the most popular fund to track S&P 500. MSCI EAFE includes the large cap stocks in developed countries across Europe, Australia and the Far East. We also have a Metaverse Index now. If you are excited about the possibilities of the Metaverse, Explore the Metaverse ETF by Roundhill Investments. You can invest in multiple companies which are going to play a prominent role in Metaverse with just one click. But they have a high expense ratio of 0.59%.
So among all these funds, you can make a choice of which funds you want to invest in. Let's take Nifty 50 as an example. There are 50 stocks in this index. Each stock has a weight in the index. Reliance is 12.51% of the index. HDFC Bank is 8.38% and so on. When an index fund is constructed, it will match the exact same ratio as these stocks. So if you invest 100 rupees in an index fund, it will invest 12.51 rupees in Reliance, 8.38 rupees in HDFC Bank and so on. This is called market weighted fund. The fund will exactly match the index. There is another kind of fund called equal weighted fund. Now what do these funds do? They assign equal weights to all the stocks in the equal weighted fund. There is no undue concentration on a few stocks in an equal weighted fund. So 50 stocks in Nifty 50, if you invest 100 rupees in an equal weighted fund, it will invest 2 rupees in Reliance, 2 rupees in HDFC Bank and so on. Equal weight to all the stocks. Do we have a clear winner that in which kind of fund you should invest in? Well, no, they both have their own pros and cons. Let's take the example of Reliance stock in a market weighted index fund because Reliance has the highest weight. If the Reliance stock goes up, it will move the index up. And if the Reliance stock goes down, it will take down the index with it. From June 2009 to Feb 2017, the stock price did not move much. Reliance has the highest weight. So if the Reliance is not making any money for you, chances are your index fund will not give a good return for you. Compare this to say 2017 to 2022, where it moved up from 900 to 2500 rupees, you would have got a good return because your highest weighted stock moved up significantly. Make sense? Now compare this to equal weighted funds where all the stocks have equal weights. Reliance moving up or Reliance moving down will not have that big of an impact when compared to the market weighted funds. Equal weighted funds are more diversified rather than being heavily concentrated in the largest companies of the index. But these equal weighted funds have higher expense ratio compared to the market weighted funds and they can fall more sharply during a recession. Trivia time. For example, if you split Reliance into two companies, Reliance A and Reliance B, then in the market weighted index fund, we'll still have the same total weight for the two Reliance companies, right? Because the total weight has not changed, it has just split into two. But in an equal weighted index fund, it will now have double the exposure. It will invest two rupees in Reliance A and two rupees in Reliance B, correct? Benefits of investing in index fund. Number one, this is the simplest way to get equity exposure. It's simpler to track indices performance than run after alpha. Number two, indices generally rise over time. So you are bound to get positive returns. Number three, due to lower expense ratio, index funds are cheaper than other schemes. Number four, there is no stock specific risk. The index funds are diversified. Number five, you do not need to do research on individual companies. It's a simple passive way of investing. And number six, it removes the human bias in selecting the stocks for your portfolio. If you thought you needed a lot of time to start researching and start investing, I hope you now understand that index funds are great tool to start investing right away, even if you know very little about the stock market. If you're sitting on the fence to make that jump, index funds are a great tool to start investing and this is a great time to make that jump. Click the like button, hit subscribe and press the bell icon. I am leaving two videos for you here. Do check them out. Don't forget to collect your $10 with the link mentioned in the description below. Wrapping it up, this is Paritosh signing off.